My guest today first came to Kitchener in 1964. He was an accountant with the former Clarkson Gordon working as an audit manager and the city of Kitchener was one of his clients. This was at a time when the audit manager signed every check issued by the city. In 1973, with the creation of regional government, he was hired by the city of Kitchener as a director of finance. He would later go on to become the city treasurer and commissioner of finance, and eventually the CAO, the chief administrative officer. He left the city in 2001 and then ran for city council and was successfully elected. He continued in his capacity as a counselor until his retirement in 2022. I'm pleased to welcome a 2023 Waterloo Region Hall of Fame inductee, John Gazzola. John, buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Well, we, we finally got you retired. Yes, <laughs> took a while, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, went, out, went out on your own terms. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, I know. So, so John, we're going to, you know, your history with the city from when you started to, you know, uh, as an employee uh, and, and eventually manager, uh, CAO and, and counselor, we're actually going to probably, we're going to do two shows uh, with respect to you. So in the first part, this show, I want to I want to focus on the early days coming to the city, uh, you know, what you did uh, working with the city and the people you worked with and the projects you worked on until the 2001 uh, when you when you uh, left the city and then went on. And then the second show, we'll talk about your time uh, on council and some of the things that you worked on during that. Um, so tell me, how is it that you came to be in Kitchener? Uh, how did that come about? Yes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. To start, I grew up I grew up in Ingersoll. And then when the time came, I went to university to the University of Western Ontario. I was the uh, first one in my family to ever think of going uh, beyond grade 12. Uh -huh. So I attended the University of Western Ontario uh, between 1956 and 1960. I obtained my honors degree in economics and political science. And at that point, I went on to, uh, to further my education by uh, enrolling with uh, a firm Clarkson and Gordon to take my CA. My chartered accounting degree was taken uh, through uh, the uh, Queen's University. It was a, it was a three year uh, course that you took by, uh, by sending in, uh, by doing it through the mail. Through the mail. So, okay. Yeah, so, so you're working in, and you're going to school sort of through the mail. That's great. And on, on Thursday nights by 1130, I had to get one of my one of my assignments postmarked. So I made uh -oh. sure. <laughs> <laughs> in the old, good old mail. So hey, let me ask you, were you, uh, are you first generation uh, Canadian or? Uh, yeah. Yes. So my parents. Parents were from Italy, from uh, the northern part of Italy, near Venice. Uh, they came, my parents came, uh, my dad came to this country to, to give us an opportunity to go to school. And, and when, uh, in his day back, this is in the early 1900s, there, it, was, it was impossible for someone of his, in his class, Right. Economic standing to yep. uh, to get an education. He had a brother who went into the priesthood, and so that was it for the family. Everybody else had to stay home and work the farm. <laughs> okay, and uh, so he finally uh, got an opportunity uh, to come to this country and uh, uh, landed here. Couldn't speak a word of English. It was amazing because it's. Uh, uh, because about 40, 40, 50 years later, my son, his grandson, did the reverse and went went back to Italy uh, to study for his MBA. Right, was, right. Matt. It was, I, I, really, I want to point out a, a thing about my uh, parents that uh, they uh, they ended up uh, living in, in Beachville. 
he was a laborer at a, at a quarry yep. where they made uh, lime and lime. They produced uh, lime and gypsum. And uh, <clears throat> the village of Beachville was pretty much a community of all uh, uh, Italian laborers that worked. Yes. I worked at this company. But my dad wanted us to to belong to this to his new country. We needed to speak English. We needed to get away from speaking Italian all the time. So we moved down the road about ten kilometers down the road to Ingersoll, and we were we were the only Italian, the only European family. <laughs> but we had to learn and. Uh, we melded into into society. That, now we kept all our traditions. We kept them. We used them. Sure. We enjoyed yep. them. Yep. We, we didn't force them on anyone else, and yet we did blend into to to a new and different world. Sure. Well, my uh, it's it's uh, funny you say that because my uh, zio Macalato uh, lived in Woodstock and worked in Beachville at the quarry. So uh, so is that, is that yeah. interesting? I, I spent a long time at the quarries. When I uh, when I was going through university, I was fortunate enough to to get hired on under the yard gang, and 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 the two weeks into my employment, uh, they they sort of took you know the way people look down at, at university students during so these these hotshot university students. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll teach them. Well, working on the yard gang, they. Uh, they uh, they let a they let about six hundred pounds of of steel cement fall on my toes, and I oh, in those days we didn't you didn't even wear safety shoes. <laughs> oh my gosh! So I I, I broke my uh, broke my toe. They put uh, put me in a walking cast, but then rather than to put me on workman's compensation, they started giving me odd jobs. I then started filling in as the night watchman. I, I filled in as a as a shipping clerk. I, I worked in the in the office doing some accounting. Uh, I worked worked I worked in the lab. I worked in the uh, stores where uh, they, I did very well there because I spoke Italian. Everybody there was a all the all the workers were Italian. They, yeah. they loved it. They loved it to come in and be able to to order something and and, and get their own language back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's nice. So, I, I, I've got a cousin that's still working there now, Cagino. So is, is that right? So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I I ended up spending about about uh, my all four summers while I was in university, uh, able to help me pay. Pay yeah. for my university. Cause, pays well. Pays well yeah. at the quarry. So yeah. let's uh, let's jump way ahead. So now you you're, you're um, you've come to the city of Kitchener uh, with uh, Clarkson, and you're the audit manager. I, I guess you would have had several clients, of which the city of Kitchener was one of them. Yes, yeah, so we. I would have uh, an accounting firm like that. I would have had about about fifty different clients. Uh, a lot of uh, there are a lot of and. A lot of industries, a lot of commercial clients uh, in Kitchener now that yeah. have that have long since disappeared. Sure, but, uh, sure, but uh, but yeah. but municipally, like the government, was that was that your only government uh, client? Yes, because it was a large one. We did yeah. we did out of that we did uh, out of the out of the Kitchener office. We did several, but that was the largest one. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I had uh, I had. Uh, uh, Several universities. I the University of, sure. of uh, Guelph was one. Uh, right. Water, the University of Waterloo was another one. Yeah. Uh, so okay. So and you're with Clarkson from '64 to '73. But I just want to ask yeah. you this thing about the check signing. What what was that all about? <laughs> well, in uh, in '67, um, prior to '60, I didn't have the city of Kitchener on it. I became responsible for it in '67, right. and at that point, uh, they they were shifting people around because this was this was quite an uh, extraordinary task to have to co-sign every check yeah. that the city issued. I can so, imagine. <laughs> so uh, every day, uh, staff from the finance department in the city would bring me over maybe uh, 10, 15 checks. 
which were considered rest checks that they had to have right away, along with documentation. I would go through the documentation and, and start to ask my, my questions. That's where my question asking started. And, ah, see, that's, that's where it started. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would sign the checks and they'd go off. Now, some days I would, I would walk over to the city and, and do that task. And then on the weekend, they used to bring. They had a big brown uh, case that they would bring to me, full of checks and full of documentation. I would take those home and uh, put them on the kitchen table on Sundays, and that was that was my job for Sundays, uh, <laughs> going through and. Uh, yeah. So just we won't get into it now because, like I said, we'll do a second show when you're a counselor. But by the time you become a counselor, we're talking like from. 67 till 2001. I mean, who has that sort of knowledge, depth of knowledge and experience on, on uh, how the sausage is made, so to speak, uh, uh, I- I- at a municipality, right? I mean, it, that's it, unbelievable. It, yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm proud of it, pleased with it, because uh, uh, I not only got into the detail, but we also we also had to do the an annual audit where we spent a considerable amount of time right. Uh, at the city, going through their processes, and and uh, I, I learned uh, I learned a great deal not only about about the city of Kitchener, but how the municipality worked yeah. and uh, things like that. So my experience goes back. I say that my experience goes back uh, to 1967. Yeah. So, so between 67 and 73, you're on one side of the audit. And then after 73, you're on the other side of the audit. So tell us what happened in 1973. Yeah. In 73, there was a drastic change in governance in, in Waterloo County. Prior to that, we had the, we, we had Waterloo County with, with a lot of uh, uh, rural municipalities uh, all around us uh, with, with the two, well, we, we had Kitchener, Waterloo, and then in the south, it was really, uh, what, Hespler, Preston, and uh, and, and oh, Gulf. Yeah. The, yeah. So uh, with the, the, the province made quite a considerable change where they uh, wrapped it into uh, well, three, three urban municipalities, Kitchener, Waterloo, and what later became Cambridge, and four rural municipalities. Right. Which, which covered the entire former Waterloo County. Now, when that happened, there are a lot of uh, responsibilities that prior to that were dealt with by separate commissions or committees. Uh, they received their funding uh, from the from the city, but they, they they were they were governed by by a different group of individuals, totally on their own. They. Right. Uh, so give me an example. Was, give me an example of, of a commission or committee. Yeah. Parks and Recreation was a, was a good example. They uh, Parks and Recreation worked out of uh, out of Victoria Park and, and the premises there. Uh, they were they were they were basically a separate company. So they received all their funding from the city, but uh, the councilors of the mayor and council of the day. Had had no control, uh, nothing, uh, not, no involvement with them whatsoever. Another example of that was the uh, the Kitchener Memorial Auditorium. The auditorium was a separate commission by governed by another uh, group of, of individuals. The uh, uh, the the utilities were all under another group. There was there was a separate uh, water commission. We also had the another another commission looked after transit and the gas utilities. So that was right. another. And then there was the electric utilities. They were they were all they were all separate uh, individual bodies. So in '73, they all came under the control of the council of the day. So the councilors, all of a sudden, the mayor and council were dealing with with a much bigger portfolio than they, right, right. they had, to, had to deal with in the past. The numbers, there were a lot more numbers, and the numbers were a lot bigger at this point. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, bigger than what you were dealing with during your audit days. That's right, that's right. And now, they so they had to levy the taxes accordingly. 
Now, in the past, they levied the taxes, uh, and in their tax levy would be the subsidy that was paid out to the various commissions. Right. But all of a sudden, it all came. It all came together, and uh, and it actually did get uh, rid of a lot of uh, a lot of duplication. Right. Right. Okay. So, so then. Um... And, and and I note that this was provincial led, right? This, it wasn't done. It wasn't done locally. Like the people locally couldn't get together and say, "Oh, this this makes more sense. Let's do this." Right? <laughs> no, this is the pro. The province said, "This is this is what you're going to do." There's no more Waterloo County. Waterloo County is a thing of the past. And, right. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so then obviously then with the, with the city of Kitchener taking on all these responsibilities, I guess they really had to beef up uh, staffing during this time. Yes. Uh, there was a, there were, well, there was, it was, a, it was quite a different picture. All of a sudden the, the total number of people working for the city uh, almost uh, more than doubled. So uh, we had to not only uh, increase staff in the, in the finance area, uh, you had to also increase staff in, in administration in, in, in IT, in, uh, uh, for hiring people and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so there was, there was quite a change. Yeah. So, okay. So, I mean, you're at Clarkson Gordon. It's a big national accounting firm. City Kitchener's growing bigger, but why, why, why switch over? Well, I, uh, when you're in, uh, I, I was a, accounting in accounting and, and, and mainly and mainly our field was auditing uh, various companies and uh, and you would know it as in the legal business you uh, firms in accounting and legal are are headed up by uh, by partners who don't, right, they right. don't have they don't have presidents and vice presidents they're mainly yeah. partners which is sort of the the top of the post and uh, and when you're in it, your ambition is to become a partner, right? And uh, to be part of the if uh, the, that's to be your career, you want to be part of the part of the senior management, and uh, and so that was my aspiration in those days, to, right? But uh, and I, I I rose up in the accounting firm. I came in came in shortly of the year actually the. Shortly after the year I graduated in 1960, was given an opportunity to move from uh, London to Kitchener, uh, became an audit manager, uh, which I did for for seven or eight, nine years. And, and then I went on to become a uh, senior audit manager. I did work in uh, trustee work with uh, dealing with, with bankruptcies. I, I dealt with, uh, with hiring, <laughs> hiring and Firing, yeah. I, I covered all of the aspects, and uh, I liked. Uh, by that point, I had been in the community for for seven, eight years. I came from a small community. Uh, I went to London while I was going to school, and came to Kitchener. Uh, Kitchener was much smaller than London at the time. Right. It, when I moved here in '64. Uh, Kitchener was about sixty thousand people, so, <laughs> so uh, I, I knew uh, uh, I did not. In my career, you you uh, you either you move on. If something doesn't come up in the community you're in, you're you're liable to have to move to a larger community right, like right. Toronto, Montreal, yeah. Vancouver. I preferred to stay in the smaller community, and so when the opportunity came up. At the city of Kitchener, uh, by our family was here. We were we were a grow, growing family. Yeah, uh, and uh, we had a house. Uh, and, uh, it, it's hard to get. It's hard to get into a house these days. I know young people talk, but it was just as hard, if not yeah. harder, right. 60, sixty years ago. So we had a house, and we were we were quite comfortable here, and uh, decided that. Uh, this is where we'll stay. Okay. Uh, so I get that. So the first job then uh, with the city of Kitchener was what? Was my, I was uh, hired as a director, director of finance. And, uh, and that was really dealing with, with a lot of special projects as opposed to uh, the, at the time we had the city treasurer, 
We had a, a director of accounting who was involved with the day-to-day -day accounting, payroll, things like that. And we also had a director who was in, involved with, with uh, IT. So just, uh, just uh, I'm just going to just digress for a second. Sort of a bit of a historical perspective was just list the mayors during your time as an employee of the city of Kitchener. Who were the mayors that you worked under? Just to put this in perspective for yeah. people. When I first started with the mayor, Sid McLennan uh, was mayor. That was uh, he was mayor from '68 to '74. People will know his name as being is, is part of McLennan Park which is the old right. dump site on, on, on Ottawa Street. Yes, okay. yes. He was followed by Edith McIntosh, who served one term, only served one term in 1975 and 76. The first female to become mayor of the city, the only female yeah. at this point to be yep. mayor of the city. Uh, and then in 1977, Morley Rosenberg, came onto the scene. <laughs> um, Marley had been an alderman for a number of years before that, and uh, he came on, and he was he was there from uh, 1977 to 1982. In 1983, Dominic Cardillo became mayor who, and, and held the post until 1994. In 94, um, after several elections and Richard Christie had run against Cardillo several times. And so in 19, it was 1995 where, where there was a whole new slate because it was the first time Cardillo had stepped down. So yeah. there were, there were, there were about four or five of the uh, uh, aldermen who were on council who ran, uh, including uh, Richard Christie, uh, Carl Zare. Um, who was the other uh, the other fellow uh, yeah, that was uh, he had been with the uh, he had been with the NDP he was a cabinet minister oh Willie Ferguson Willie Ferguson yeah. uh, oh he ran for mayor I, I forgot they that all, they all ran <laughs> they all ran for mayor that year and and uh, Richard Christie won in that year yeah and and then uh, then Carl Zare ran against uh, Richard. In 1997, and uh, Carl was there, was uh, there until 2014. 2014, yeah. yeah. Okay. So those, all right. Those are all the mayors I served. Yes. I served and served under. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so back to um, in finance. When you say special projects, what what do you mean by special projects? Well, like uh, physical structures, or uh, you know, um, IT uh, software changes, or what yeah, sort of things? Well, they were they were special. Uh, they were special finance stuff. At that time, uh, we were going through the building of the ring road of the uh, uh, expressway. So there was a considerable amount of work to be done with the financing where, where land had to be purchased and uh, contracts uh, land and whatnot. So that it was a, a, a very big project. That so, the Conestoga, so the Conestoga Expressway, that's a good point. So, so the cities were involved, like how was that with the regional government? Because this is a road that goes from Waterloo to Kitchener. Yes. Was each responsible for their portion or how? Well, it started, the, the, the expressway started before the region became became a region. Right. So the, uh, uh, what, what happened was that it was really a, a, a partnership between Kitchener and Waterloo, ah. became, primarily. And uh, so we had provided, we had to provide all the funding for it, Kitchener and Waterloo. Right. And, uh, so it's an interesting thing because then in in uh, seventy three when the region uh, came into play, the region assumed the debt of the various previous municipalities, and so like one of the jobs, uh, and at the same time the municipalities still maintained some of their own debt. We tried to get, we tried to push as much off as we could <laughs> to the region. So like tra of, well, transit went to the region, right? <laughs> well, that, that, that was a long time afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, right, 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 yeah, so later on. This, well, yeah. One, of the job, one of my jobs <laughs> was to try to 
shove as much much that away from the city of Kitsener <laughs> over to the region. And uh, and, I was, and and then at at, the, at one point the uh, the province had put in a considerable amount of money, and uh, within within about uh, three or four years of the expressway being in place, the the province came along and said, "Okay, we're going to uh, we're going to pay the bill for for that portion." you don't have to pay it back to us anymore. Wow. That's let me tough. let me ask you this question. I, I don't know if you know this or not. Sometimes people wonder, was the Conestoga Expressway, was there a sort more to be built uh, uh, to it, like uh, around the north and the west? or? Uh... I, I think the original concept was a complete circle around the city. Yeah. That, that was the original concept. But then you... You 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 bite off more than you can chew, and so right, yeah. So yeah, because back in the day, where people talking about was it like the road to nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, no. I, I we I did not. It was interesting because I did not hear, I did not hear the same the same kind of uh, arguments that I heard uh, with. Uh, with the LRT when it came in, okay, uh, people were. Uh, I don't know if it was so different. Uh, the the impact, the the apparent impact on the people was not was not going to be as great, right? And and, and uh, back in the day, Kitchener Kitchener was a much smaller community. The uh, the uh, it was normal for someone to work work downtown and go home for lunch. Uh, that's, that's, that's so you would go and you would have lots of time to go home for lunch, uh, relax, and go back to work. And so when the, when the expressway came along, it even it even helped out uh, helped out more with that. So, right, right. Uh, so there wasn't there wasn't the same uh, uh, there wasn't the same. Uh, uh, uproar uh, with with the expressway as as there was with the LRT. Well, it was more in the farm fields, wasn't it? Like it was yeah. uh, fewer homes or in the area. Yeah. Like it's a little less disruption to people's lives, I'd guess. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, and that and the and the the taxes were always sort of maintained at a reasonable level. That it wasn't enough to right. to, to alarm people. So, so. Um, you you eventually became treasurer. Yes. And what year was that? Yeah. Um, after I'd been, I, I went to the city in 73. I think it was about in 1977, I was appointed the deputy treasurer, which was a, which was a second in rank in the, in the finance department. In 1985, the, uh, the city treasurer at, at that time was a gentleman by the name of Robert Eby who uh, retired in that, in 1985 and uh, at that point I was uh, appointed by the council of the day uh, to fill his position. Now hey tell me I, I want you to tell me this small world story about Robert Eby. No well, his uh, his grandson today is the premier of uh, British Columbia. Yeah, so wild. Very, That's yeah, very wild. Small world. He was a uh, uh, I think uh, I think the grandfather I think was a staunch liberal, so he's probably oh. probably turning over in the grave. But sure. <laughs> it's, it's a very a very small world, though. Well, when you don't you, know what you know what I don't know what the labels mean out in BC these days. Anyway, it's hard to keep track. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so okay, so so you but so you're a deputy treasurer uh, and reporting to to Bob or Robert Eby. Yeah. And then you became treasurer when? In 1985. Okay. I started out the year in 85. Uh, I think it was January the 1st of 85. I, I was in that position. I got to move into the corner office. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. Um, you listed off a number of the, the mayors that you were working for. Um, how, how did you find, uh, um, I, I'm not going to, get into the particulars, but one of the things I wanted to touch on was uh, working with Morley because it was around that time that there was discussion about utilities, right? Uh, 
Yeah, there were no, there were a number of issues when Morley was there that that uh, had an impact on uh, on it. See, the, the one of the things, uh, one of the biggest issues, and it wasn't a, it wasn't even an issue that a lot of the public would have been aware of, and there was the fact that we we did own our our gas utilities. We were one of the few uh, municipalities in the province who hung on to their gas operations. Every, at one time, City of Waterloo, Cambridge, they, they had their own uh, natural gas works. And one by one, they ended up selling them to... So let me just let me just ask you, just to explain that for people. So when you're owning the gas, is it sort of like the the hydro utility? Like you're, uh, you're, you're delivering energy, so you're getting paid for... Uh, you know, the lines that are delivering the energy. So with gas, is that the same thing? You're delivering gas? It's exactly the same thing. We were, we're, we're, we're the middleman in the, in the operation. It's like the, like the hydro is where the hydro buys their, the electricity. They put it across their lines and, and, and what we're, it's the same thing with, with the natural gas. Yeah. We and, don't produce. And I just want to add all the municipalities in the area own their their hydro utilities and cherish them because they don't want to see them go unless you know some communities sell but i think in Waterloo region uh there's a there's a strong urge to hold on to the hydro utilities but the gas was a different story so tell us about that well the gas people they the municipalities tended because you can make a a fast dollar and uh, the problem is once you made the fast dollar you spend it very quickly yeah uh, i i uh, during uh, my my career with the city, uh, I did serve on uh, on on hydro, and I, this is we'll get into this in the next you know, the next segment. Right. But, but just a simple, we did have a small a company that that uh, Kitchener started with Waterloo and Cambridge. There was a small electrical company, and separate from delivering. Uh, uh, hydro to customers like that. Uh, it was really a company that had uh, put wires in across the cities. Anyhow, right. we ended up, uh, and it was, it was a prosperous company, it was making making good profits and, and serving a real service because it, it put in heavy duty lines right across the entire city, which, which meant it was easy to bring the internet and that all over. Right. So, so, but along came along came a company uh, a few years ago and, and offered a, a nice figure. I think the city of Kitchener ended up getting eight or nine million dollars, and so the the council of the day decided to sell it. Yes, let it go. Right. And so that so that's an example of where it got sold for the for the money, and then it gets yeah. used up, and you lose that ongoing revenue. But I want to talk about the gas utility though. Yeah. No. So, um, so we're running a gas utility. How is it then that some of these municipalities, who was buying these gas utilities? What was going on? It was the same sort of issue. I just wanted to, to finish up on the other thought. The nine okay. million, the nine million dollars we got, and yeah. within two, two years it was gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I got the. I figured that's where the story was going. <laughs> it, was the same, it was the same issue with the gas utilities, yeah. and and those uh, in Ontario here. Union Gas was the, the company that was going around buying all of these smaller companies and and picking them up and uh, uh, we and then we, we, there were overtures made to Kitchener. Uh, Rosenberg was at the time he was mayor. He was quite anxious in uh, in, in in seeing the opportunity to perhaps make a sale because we were we were talking many millions of dollars in those right. days. Mm -hmm. uh, a very good price, and uh, it's amazing what, uh, as mayor, you can do with those those numbers. Those well, numbers there's, of dollars, always, right? there's always capital, you know, infrastructure <laughs> projects that you'd like oh, to do. You can do a lot of things in your name, but so <laughs> there, so <laughs> in your name. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, so periodically, there'd be people looking to to buy to buy the, take over the gas line. Yeah, uh, and it it sort of came came to a bigger head when when uh, when when uh, Rosenberg was mayor, and uh, now it had it had risen uh, several times before that, but it was sort of 
felt right at the beginning. But uh, Morley Rosenberg, who at the time was became extra interested in it. I remember we took a whole uh, uh, group of people down to to Kingston, who who also had a small uh, natural gas business, and to to talk to them about it. And uh, but we ended up. I know as uh, at that time I was either I was either uh, city treasurer or director of finance. I had a lot of opportunity to to give my say on financial matters. So right. I did a, I did an awful lot of arguing on 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 it's much better to, to, to keep the utilities look at what we what you can do with it. Yes, you can sell it, make a fast buck, do a lot of things. Uh, if you if you it would be great if you could sell it and say we'll take that money and we'll put it into a strict reserve and we'll only touch but uh, councils don't work like that. Once they, once they, once they see the cash there, uh, there are always right. there right. are always lots of opportunities. So, so you were you were advocating for because this thing is cash flow positive, as yeah. they say, right? Yeah. So, but do some sometimes um, there's infrastructure upgrades or those sorts of costs? Is you know like with our water, there's always you know we always have to improve the system, invest in the system. I guess there really wasn't that sort of concern. Uh, with the gas utility, well, no, that you have the same concerns that you 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 have to maintain the the infrastructure, but the the the, the economics of it was set up that you're able to do that uh, because you weren't the, the the gas utility was not part of of the tax rate. The gas utility was a separate organization who sent out separate bills. Right. It wasn't part of your taxes. When it comes to water, and that that was part of the tax bill. So when you go to improve the infrastructure there or maintain it, the impact of it is felt by the by the taxpayer. On the yeah. other one, it's felt by the customer, and the, and the, the customer and the taxpayer are often the same person, right. but the impact is 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 not felt in the same manner. So did did Marley ever bring this before council like uh, for a vote on whether to sell the utility or not? And it, it never became as far as I can remember it never came to council. I know there uh, there were a lot of uh chats discussions. Right. Uh I remember people that were on the uh on the board at the time uh, talking to them about how there was there were a lot there was a lot of discussion going on. But it never. So, so did they? Did Union Gas ever make an offer? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. No, no. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you're able to convince them not to give it up, and uh, and and today we still have that gas utility, yes, right? We yes, we do. Yes, and it 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 is it has been a tremendous boon to the to the people of Kitchener. I've always claimed that without that, uh, without that gas works, people's taxes would have automatically increased by uh, between ten and fifteen percent, and that's yeah, they're, able, they're, they're able to keep cut that off every year because of that, uh, because of the natural gas system. Well, let's just sidetrack to one one of the projects that you worked on that I think the, the, having the gas utility helped in the financing. Uh, would that be the the new city hall, for example? Yes, uh, that's another action I was 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 quite uh, pleased with because um, we we had been in a in a rental situation. Our city hall was rented from 1973 to 1993, and when that was the other thing when we, uh, when we, uh, when the governance changed, we started off uh, by having a brand new city hall, uh, and there was a, I don't know if you remember, there was quite a quite a discussion at the time. The old city hall was torn down and. Uh, done away with well let's um, let's talk about uh, yeah okay let's stop then for a second let's talk about that old city hall what what do you recall about the debate at that time because yeah. it was like what it was like what we needed a a, a department store <laughs> to mm -hmm. anchor the downtown or something and the city hall was in the way <laughs> and I, I i want to just throw in on the side here in that 
I worked in that old city hall, and I worked in the next one that we moved in in 73, and yeah. then I worked into the one in, in 93. So I, I really believe I'm the only individual around <laughs> around the region who has worked in all three city halls. So yeah, what, yeah. What, what, yeah, what about that decision to get rid of the old city hall? It seems like it such was, a shame, but that's hindsight. Maybe I don't know. It was quite a it was quite a decision, and that uh, the uh, uh, prior a few years prior to when it was gotten rid of, there had been a fire in that in that uh, district right near the city hall. Uh, the place was let let go. Uh, things were a little were were like a dump. Uh, and it was the same story of uh, of, of uh, the, the economy, the economics. Uh, by this point, uh, merchants are moving out to the outskirts, out to the malls. Oh, yeah. Downtown is suffering, and and so along comes an opportunity uh, for a big uh, commercial project right in the center of the city, and. Uh, right. And that sort of led the day. And uh, I know, uh, uh, I, I confess, at the time, I was sort of uh, in favor of, yeah, let's we need to we need to move forward. This is the this is the good opportunity. And uh, there was an awful lot of debate. It was a terrible, terrible mistake. Oh, it was a terrible mistake because I now and I, I I'm right. I'm uh, heavily involved and. In, in in that tradition and uh, what a beautiful building that could still be there today right and, and housed the library housed something but it's yeah. gone but yeah but the economics of the day uh, in order to keep to, to bolster things in the downtown it's it seems like the thing to do right uh, interesting enough uh, at that time Clarkson and Gordon who were the auditors their external auditors, uh, did a did quite a study a review on it and they uh, they went along they favored the uh, uh, going in that direction removing the old city hall and yeah. putting in this new uh, facility to yeah. like bolster retail and other things yeah. in the core yes yeah yeah tough calls okay so um, let's jump ahead to the yeah. to the new city hall then so tell us about um, uh, you know the what what your involvement with that was i think it was pr predominantly in terms of uh uh building the reserves to build it uh and tell us about all of that yeah so we we got into the to the uh, what i'll call the temporary city hall in, in 73 and we went along we were there but as time and that, that was an era uh in the late 70s early 80s when interest rates were 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 over the roof was just a you know, and so we were, we were. Uh, one of the things I did at that time was to bring a study forward to council, limiting the amount of debt we would go into, so that the impact on the taxpayer. I had it worked right out so that the impact on the taxpayer would be no greater than a certain percentage. Right, and, and in order to do that, we had to we had to cut back. And we had to cut back on 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 our capital expenditures, and 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 it, and it took a period of, of of four or five years, and it, it nothing was ever canceled. It just meant that some things, instead of being done in one year, maybe got postponed for two or three years. Right, so, yeah, so, that's a good point because the, the the capital plan isn't always fixed in stone, and sometimes yeah. you can push things off. It's like yeah. it's like wearing your shoes a little longer yeah. or driving yeah. that car a little longer. Yeah. And we were able to do that, and the council of the day uh, uh, went along with it. Uh, sure, a couple of things might have been a little later in being built, but they were, they were eventually yeah. all built. So it was in at this era where the interest rates were were humongous. And uh, we were getting we were getting them uh, close to the time where we had to renew our option on the uh, on the city hall, and uh, I was looking at it as in the, from the from the finance issue. We we have been there for twenty years. At the end of twenty years, we paid millions of dollars and had nothing to show for it. So it was yeah. a, it was a back back at that time. It would be back in. Uh, uh, 
early 80s that uh, we were able to, whenever, whenever we had a unforeseen surplus come from something, I would pers persuade council to put it into a reserve, into a special reserve. Further and, and that reserve allowed you to um, finance your new city hall. And, and, and how short a time were you able to pay off the well, whole debt? That's it. We sort of built up a reserve. We, we built, so we built a city hall in 93. By 1995, uh, we had paid for the city hall and paid off the a few million dollars that we had borrowed uh, to do it. So yeah. within, a, within a couple of years, it was all paid off without any immediate impact uh, on uh, on the taxpayers. Let me ask you this: um, you know, uh, you know, our region, Waterloo in particular, dealt with things like the Rim Park and, and issues of financing and stuff. MFP ever come across your desk? Oh yes, I had I, I had a lot to do with that. Uh, being the being the treasurer at the time, at the same time I was heavily involved with uh, Kitchener Minor Hockey. I was involved. I was their treasurer, bookkeeper, uh, gopher for thirty years. Yes. So when MFD, they came along, they wanted to get everybody involved in these projects. So they wanted the city to be involved. They wanted Kitchener Minor Hockey to be involved. The all our all our uh, the all the municipalities in the region they were after everyone, and we uh, we used to get to, we used to gather together the the treasures of each of the municipalities of the three cities and the four rural areas would get together at, at least once a month to discuss issues and that and that was one of the main issues we had and uh, I can remember. Uh, uh, I can remember Waterloo going into it uh, uh, hard and serious. I, I saw a number of flaws in what they were proposing to do, and uh, and I was totally totally opposed to it. Uh, I was later uh, criticized by uh, some members of council of of lacking vision, not being very visionary. And to that, I uh, say now, uh, yes, I lack the vision, but. To this day, 2023, the citizens of Waterloo are still paying for their Rim Park fiasco. So, yeah, yeah. So, you, I mean, you generally had the view, um, you know, limit debt or not get into too much debt. You had some concerns about that, right? Yeah, and it was the, it was a quite a complicated issue, and it had it dealt with uh, with uh, with purchasing. Uh, IT equipment when that from this MFT and right and whatnot and uh, and then it got into some some pretty uh, some pretty weak uh, tax problems or problems that could create serious tax problems that that others didn't look go all the way forward on it to look through what could happen down the road and and that's eventually what happened uh, they all went belly up and uh, but. Uh, so we should mention you eventually became CAO for the city. Yes. Then uh, in uh, what year was it? I think it was, it was 95. Uh, the CAO of the day uh, was, was let go, as, as is the case when you're in the senior position in any organization. There's, there's always uh, different thoughts from the, from the board of directors. Or from the, Council of the day, and uh, so he was. He was let go in the early part of 1995. At that point, uh, Richard Christie was the mayor, and midway through 95, uh, when the, when the previous CAO left, I was appointed as interim CAO. Uh, but I also was to carry my 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 day job of oh, commissioner, so commissioner of finance. And city treasurer. So you're doing so, two things. So there's a lot of gapping going on there. <laughs> so I, so I, had two, I had two roles that uh, took quite a took yes. quite a bit of time, and so I did that. Let me that. ask you. Let me ask you, John. I want to ask you this: uh, the role of CAO vis-a-vis -vis council, right? I mean, uh, and mayor. It's a pretty uh, it's a pretty tight relationship, or one that's a pretty important relationship in any municipality. It's, it's a senior. It's a senior position in, in in the municipality. It's the 
equivalent of a president in a in a regular uh, corporation. And so uh, there's a there's a there, and it's a little different even in a, in a municipality because uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say that there's a close relationship between the CAO and the mayor. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure in a normal corporation. It's the same thing between the the president and the chairman of the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and the direction that a municipality takes often, uh, what the mayor and the CAO are working on, really really guides that direction. Yeah, it's a, they, there is a relationship between the CAO and the rest of the council, but it's it's not as greater as uh, as much as it is because the mayor. The mayor was a full-time position. The mayor has an office in the building. Yeah. Uh, he's there. He or she is there. Uh, the CAO is there, has an office nearby. So there's a, there's a lot of interaction yeah. that, uh, that does impact uh, decisions that are made down the road where, you, where those, that same closeness isn't there with, uh, with the rest of council. There is yeah. still a lot of uh, discussion, but not to the same degree. So, so I think, John, what we're going to do is we're going to end it on this note, okay? And we're going to pick it up in the next show, uh, talking about the CAO relationship with the mayor, how sometimes that changes and uh, results in change. And this is and, and drives, uh, you know, and, and led to your uh, situation where you became a counselor. Uh, for a long period of time. And that's where we'll pick up the, the John Gazzola and Kitchener story, uh, <laughs> volume two. <laughs> I hope it hasn't been too boring for you. No, no, very interesting. Some good stuff. And we'll talk about Center in the Square next time we get together yes, as well. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Because uh, okay. I think it's a good story as well. So yeah. listen, John, thanks for being on the show today. Really appreciate the time. And yeah. uh, this walk through the early days of uh, Kitchener and the region and mm -hmm. uh, getting things up and running. Yes, it's interesting, and uh, I've been here, done that. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for listening to another edition of the Old Gray Mayors podcast. If you have any ideas for stories or people you would like us to interview or reach out to, please feel free to contact us. And thank you again.